This is BBC World News and Hard Talk with Stephen Sacker. More than two years after the Sri Lankan army conclusively defeated the separatist Tamil Tigers, there is powerful evidence to suggest both sides committed serious war crimes in the closing stages of their conflict. A UN panel concluded as much in April last month. Graphic video footage screened on British television added to the international pressure for an independent investigation. My guest today is Sri Lankan MP and advisor to the President on Reconciliation, Rajiva Wijasinha. Can there be reconciliation without justice? Rajiva Sinha, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Do you believe it is important to get to the truth of what happened in that closing phase of the war between the Sri Lankan army and the Tamil Tigers? I think truth is always important. I think sometimes truth has various connotations put to it, which lead to falsehood as well. And I think we should actually confine ourselves to facts but always bearing in mind that the future is much more important than the past. Yeah, facts are important, aren't they? And I just wonder why, for example, it seems the Sri Lankan government, two years and two months after the end of that war, still doesn't have any clear idea of how many civilians were killed. Oh, I think uh, we have a very clear idea of how many were killed many altogether. Were killed? Uh, the figure I've sort of given, uh, which I said two years ago, is about 5,000 altogether. And that, to be clear, is in the final offensive. We're talking really about the five months of 2009, maybe the tail end of 2008. I think well. that's the important part, because, of course, one of the factors that I think no one recognizes is that we ourselves were deeply concerned about civilian casualties. I was head of the Peace Secretariat during that period, and I would every morning monitor what appeared on Tamil net and have a report and if it struck me that something had been excessive I would ask for reports from the Air Force and the Army. The problem is though that nobody mm. regards that figure you've just given me of 5,000 civilians killed as credible do they? The UN panel set up by the Secretary General reckons that there is credible evidence that 40,000 civilians were killed in that final well, phase Well I think of if the you war. read the UN panel's report thoroughly which very few people have done it's not really a UN panel report. It was appointed by the Secretary General to advise him on accountability issues. Unfortunately, certain people, including your former Foreign Secretary, decided from the beginning that there needed to be a war crimes, crimes tribunal. He said as much in the House of Commons. And unfortunately, some people sitting on this um, uh, advisory committee also took up that approach. We had evidence, for instance, that in May 2009, people were applying to sit on a war crimes tribunal that the UN was setting up. I'm sorry, are you, are you calling into question the integrity of the people on the UN panel? No, I'm calling into question their judgment. I'm also calling into question the fact that they seem to have decided to sit in judgment when that was not what they were meant to do. For instance, when Sri Lanka decided that they would not come into the country, the Secretary General said, that's fine because they're only here to advise me, but they protested. They saw themselves as sitting as an inquiry board. They clearly felt that not being allowed into the country inhibited their ability to actually investigate what had happened. Well, if the Secretary General who appointed them thought it shouldn't, because that was not what they were appointed to investigate. But with respect, the Secretary General wasn't doing the investigation. They were. No, and the as Secretary you well General know, they're all highly them. credible people. I mean, um, they are, well, I'm not to go so through, sure. To go through it, they're the former Indonesian Attorney General. They're a South African lawyer who sat on the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Commission there, and also one of America's leading legal scholars, Steve well, Ratner. Steve Ratner, who has written accusing the Sri Lankan government of being an apartheid type regime, which is complete nonsense. Uh, Kiki Darusman, the former UN Attorney General, if you remember, was the head of the UN hu uh, Indonesian Human Rights Commission, and at that stage he didn't actually allow many investigations to many things, but he has since taken up a very, I think, remarkably let's say active career working for the UN but let us assume that they are sincere people I think what you also have to recognize is there is what I call a human rights industry 
and that seems to look at things from a particular perspective and not the political yeah, issues. Well, you, you can call into question the validity of their findings, but there is a problem for you at the moment. Both the UN panel and the video evidence all appear to point in one direction. To quote the UN panel's conclusions, the conduct of the war represented a grave assault on the entire regime of international law, and there is the video evidence to back that suggestion up. Well, I think you've rather put the cart before the horse. I don't know whether you've ever heard of Wittgenstein's statement about someone who bought a second copy of the morning paper to make sure that what the first said was true. And this is really what we've got, because if you go through the Durrisman report, a lot of it is based on two sources. One is the Channel 4 material, because a lot of things they describe without saying where it came from is precisely what was on the Channel 4 stuff. The second is a lot of stuff is taken, some of it verbatim, from a book by a man called Gordon Weiss, who worked for the UN in rather junior capacity in Sri Lanka, and who tends to corroborate what they say. Now, when we tell people that what well, they say is correct... Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You're just, you, the, the, your answers are very complicated, but there are some very simple things are that we, we should address. The Sri Lankan armed forces shelled hospitals, makeshift hospitals, but with red crosses uh, very visible, and with coordinates and locations which have been given to the Sri Lankan army by the ICRC. We know that as fact, do we not? No, what we know is that shells did fall in hospitals. I have with me the documents I collected. You know, some of you think you cared about civilians. I did as well. I got these every day, and I would ask questions. And if you look at the number of times that Tamilnet alleged a particular hospital was shelled, uh, it couldn't exist at all. We know, for instance, that in January, uh, towards the end of January, there were several allegations. The Americans, who actually gave us what I thought was a very well-constructed set of questions, actually helped us by saying, you know, we had reports of this being shelled, but our aerial photograph showed it was tainted. Sure, but the problem with your argument is that it was UN officials, indeed former military people, who understood the nature of shell fire very well, who were quite clear in saying that the shells came from, from the Sri Lankan army I'm positions. afraid that is not true. The person uh, I, I, I think you'll find it is true. No, I'll tell you exactly what happened as far as I'm concerned in terms of direct discussion with people. Don't forget this is a third hand. In January, there was a report about people being dead, and we had the head of the UN calling us up on January 26th, which is mentioned in Channel 4, and we checked on this. In the evening, the head of the UN, who is not interviewed by this panel, sent me an SMS, he said to my minister, saying, for information, we believe much of the shelling came from the LTT. Now, this I, guy, I, I, when I he came to see me... people who've seen the video evidence will be wondering, what on earth are you talking about? You've seen the evidence. It is quite clear that the shells were coming from Sri Lankan army positions. It would be ridiculous. And, you, and, and you, it is we've quite seen clear also that, that this happened repeatedly, repeatedly, not just on the January sorry, 26th you've occasion you've talked about, but all the way through to the middle of May. This sorry, happened repeatedly. Sorry, but you repeatedly. are saying that when you see a shot of a hospital, it came definitely from somewhere. This is what Chris Ditoa confessed to us when we spoke to him, was not clear. And he finally told us there's only one shot of which he could tell the trajectory definitely. And he said that came from the LTT. This was the January one. Now, when you go on to the May ones, as I have said already, I'm sure shells from our side may have fallen the hospitals. But what do you do? And I think the British government has shown us very clearly the answer. What do you do? when the LTT moves heavy weapons next to the hospital. Good, uh, do you ignore you. So it you, or not? You, you are, can't ignore it. You just said it. to me you are now sure mm -hmm. that Sri Lankan artillery shells landed on makeshift hospitals. No, I said towards I mean, them. Uh, forgive they, me, unless I am misunderstood. You said, moving on from the January 26th incident, that uh, you were sure, there was a word you just used, sure that Sri Lankan shells landed on these makeshift hospitals. I, say on, I said in them. Look, if you look at what well, I've got here... What's the difference here, between in and on? If you're a patient the, in a ward which has been hit by a shell, if it lands in or on, what is the difference? Because the difference is between deliberate targeting and, as you saw recently in the NATO attack, you know, sometimes the um, technology, and we don't have as good technology as you, can go wrong, but there is a difference between deliberate targeting and near. Now, one of the things the report says is every hospital in the Vanni was deliberately shelled. I, th I have here the details well, of what that, happened. Do you know about that the Army had the coordinates because the ICRC has confirmed that they passed on coordinates. Yes, you also know that the international rules of war say that even if 
you have reason to believe that enemy action is coming from a hospital, you have no right to fire on that hospital without giving a clear notification and without giving a deadline. And that was not I done. I don't think you heard what the chap on the Channel 4 said. He said, if the hospital is being used for military purposes, you are allowed to fire so long as you fire on the, 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 the guns. I, you heard I, the guy I, yesterday. I, I think that's actually not right. I think that the, the clear international law says you have to notify, to warn, to set a deadline before you even consider shelling a well, hospital. Well, the Tigers had been told to remove their stuff from the hospitals. This had been repeatedly told them. And I think we could not allow them when they continue to keep their weapons there. That is clearly Just as said. you refuse to acknowledge culpability on the shelling of hospitals, though you have acknowledged that shelling of hospitals took place, do you also refuse to accept culpability when it comes to the images of detainees, prisoners, being shot, summarily executed? Stephen, I just have to correct you. I accept, I accepted responsibility for shelling of weapons. Culpability is a different word. If you, you are responsible of this for shelling weapons, if it falls on civilians through collateral damage, that is not culpability, that yeah, is responsibility. I, I said you didn't accept culpability, so what are you quarreling about? No, you about? actually said culpability for shelling yeah, hospitals. Yeah, I said you didn't accept culpability, you accepted that the shelling had taken no, you, place. You so let's move on now to summary no, executions. Should, should quibble, but you listen to it again. Okay. Summary executions. On the, the summary evidence executions, in the video I think what clear. we have said very clearly is if the details of any clear allegation is put before us, we will investigate. When Channel 4 first showed a video in August 2009, we asked them for the video. They wouldn't give it to us. In fact, Philip Alston of the UN asked them for the video. They wouldn't give it to him. He had to get it, and it was an altered version. I, looking at the It film, was an altered version. What do you mean? The, the video sent by journalists of democracy to Alston's experts was saliently different from the video shown by Channel you see, 7. You see, Channel 4 is quite plain. They have not tampered with this video in any way. You have alleged that they've backtracked on that claim, uh, that it's all legitimate and genuine. They have absolutely rejected that notion. They stand by every single piece of video, by its authenticity and by their journalism. So where does that leave you now? I'm sorry, what I said was not dead back. But I said the UN experts who first accepted the Channel 4 claim that this was straight from a mobile phone have in their second analysis pointed out that what was shown was edited. Chris Christoph it was edited Hines, backwards. Christoph Hines, the UN uh, investigator with responsibility for looking at these charges, has said he does not doubt the authenticity of these videos. But I'm just telling you what his expert said. You cannot doubt the authenticity. Well, Christoph Hines, with all due respect, is the point man at the UN who is considering the, the authenticity of these videos. And he's Don't absolutely silly. I mean, are we supposed to accept that what someone says simply because he's a point man is necessarily correct? But this I'm is the man who has consulted video expertise around the world. There have been many analyses run of these videos and the conclusion is they're genuine. No, they're generally genuine. You read those reports properly, which I suspect you haven't done, and you will find that of the three experts, there are people who say, this video has been edited and it's shown upside down. What was filmed first is shown third. What was, filmed, what was shown fifth was taken at a different location, perhaps on a different date. And we are shown this by Channel 4, who never told us this. So they have not backtracked, but if the experts say this has been edited upside down, I think we have to ask why. This is the, all we're uh, asking, the and what these, what these guys say is that they asked for explanations from Channel 4, and they didn't get any. So please read these reports.